Christianity is a major world religion, but it has done an innovation, a type of disruptive innovation, which it crafted, and in using this innovation, it has managed to become a major force, psychologically, spiritually, and physically, into the lives of billions, and will continue to influence others, even those that oppose it. Yes, what is that innovation? What is the definition of innovation? Innovation comes from the Latin inno into novare make new, innovare, which is Latin, to innovate, which is a mid 16th century word. It means the creative development of a specific product, service, or idea with the goal of pleasing certain people. In this case, with the goal of controlling and running the lives of billions. In this video, we provide evidence about this innovation that the church, is, the church uses, even today to influence everyone, including its opponents. Through this innovation, Christianity receives tremendous support, even from people that it has colonized, abused, and destroyed. It continues to do so through that innovation. We have to understand that innovation. Once you realize it, you work very hard to free yourself and to remove yourself from the influence and power and impact of that innovation. It's not an easy thing, but it can be done. Freed of Christian innovation is a possibility. In conclusion in, to this theme, the story of the crucifixion of Jesus is a divine sacrifice is inspired from a lot of other ancient sources and has become the only major theological innovation crafted by Christianity, particularly the Roman Catholic Church, now a foundational belief for every Christian worldwide. Yet almost every thinking human being knows that there never has been a man who ever walked the earth in human form of any race, creed or color by the name of Jesus Christ, also known as Serapis. You can read the book, The Historical Origin of Christianity by Dr. Walter Williams. It is very clear that there are many reasons that the Catholic Church is the one true church founded by Jesus Christ, who they created and who never lived at all. It is very clear and shocking that Jesus never lived. Christian innovation creates a Jesus gradually and eventually manages to use him as a bait to capture human imagination. The key is to know that Christianity is a new religion and the basis of its innovation is the fictional character Jesus and his supposed crucifixion. Let's look at the time when this was crafted and when this started. We are starting AD because we know the history of Ose Rapis, apologist, Christian apologist origin. When he was replying especially to Celsius, who was irrational at that time and never believed that, never produced historical nature of Jesus, but appealed to the mythological existence of other pagan gods to prove that Jesus was a credible God. It is very clear that the church father writes and says, it is often very difficult and sometimes quite impossible to establish its truth by evidence which shall be considered sufficient. This is clear an admission that as early as the second and third centuries the claims put forth about jesus did not admit of positive historical demonstration just mitre another church apologist in his argument against those that didn't believe in jesus says about the christian legend when we say also that the word which is the first birth of god was produced without sexual union and that he, Jesus Christ, our teacher, was crucified, died, and rose again, and ascended into heaven, we propound nothing different from what you believe regarding those whom you esteem as sons of Jupiter. This innovation started when Celsus says, let's assume for the present that Jesus foretold in your scriptures, his resurrection 
Are you ignorant of the multitudes who have invented similar tales to lead simple-minded hearers astray? What about Orpheus among the Odrysians? Doubtless you will freely admit that these other stories are legends, even as they appear to me. But you go on to say that your resurrection story, this climax to your tragedy, is believable and noble. Very, very clear. Let's continue to say that not in any of the paintings in ancient catacombs found in Rome could you find a crucified Christ. The earliest cross bearing a human being comes 800 years later after the event. You can read this book, uh, Mangasian, Jesus is he a myth? Because for a long time, a lamb with a cross or on a cross was the Christian symbol. And it is a lamb which we see entombed in this holy sepulchres. Even a fish was used. Even an anchor was used. Even a dove was used. Why? Because it is very clear that the lamb has some significance. You can see in this image that it was used by priests of Bacchus, showing the lamb, the cross, engraved in the 11th century, mosaic and all forth, and then the lamb in the holy sepulchre, mosaic of the 4th century, sarcophagus of Luke by the beam, showing the lamb on the cross, as well as the lamb on the cross here. The Christian innovation inspired not by God, but by the ram, which is one of the earliest and the oldest symbols of the zodiac, which predates Christianity. And it is the origin of your belief. If you believe that a lamb died for your sins and the blood of the lamb cleanses you from all your sins, the Christian lamb takes away the sins of the people just as the Paschal lamb did in the Old Testament and just as earlier traditions and other beliefs did in African traditions and in Babylonia, in Hamet. But the innovation that Christianity has used has hoodwinked billions. Few ask the questions, how has it hoodwinked billions and how did it come about and how did a lamp got hold of the cross and how was the lamp removed from the cross? It was removed by Eusegius I, who served as Pope from 687 to 701, who said, now it's time for you to use a human figure to replace the lamb on the cross. To the same effect, following the letter of the Bishop of Mende in France bearing a date of 800 AD, he says, because the darkness has disappeared and because also Christ is a real man, Pope Adrian commands us to paint him under the form of a man. The lamb of God must not any longer be painted on the cross. But after a human form has been placed on the cross, there is no objection to have a lamb also represented with it either at the foot of the cross or on the opposite. So you have to think of your religion. You, all this information, you can also verify it and read it from the truth about Jesus Christ, from the truth about Jesus and the Bible unveiled M.M. Mangasarian. Very, very, very critical and important. The imagery and the symbolism of Jesus as the sacrificial lamb drawing and drawn from elements of Jewish sacrificial systems is a reinterpretation of a lot of ancient, ancient narratives. It is an innovation, a deceptive innovation. Sadly, it emphasizes on the redemptive significance of the creator. But we know that the real creator is unknowable. The real creator is neither a man, a spirit, or a being. There is a chasm between the realities that we deal with from the real creator. And also the trick of sin is that you are told that you cannot forgive yourself of sins or you cannot remove sins of yourself, which is not correct because you cannot sin against the real creator. You can sin only against yourself, the ancestors, the neighbor and the divinities. But you have the power to save your own soul because the kingdom of heaven is within you and whosoever shall know himself shall find it. So it is very, very important for us to understand that Christianity may not identify itself as the original religion, but it has usurped the authority and the, the power to forgive sin from you. The lamp on the cross is purely a Catholic innovation. Don't be deceived by Jesus' violent death. Don't be deceived by the teachings that it fulfills Old Testament prophecies. It does not. Because in the Jewish sacrificial system, the offering was sacrificed 
on the altar by a priest. It was not crucified on a dirty, sacrilegious place. The blood was not drunk, but it was put on the altar and into the earth. And there should be a priest, not Roman soldiers. So all that proves that this was not a Jewish fulfillment of any prophecy. If Jesus was God, the question is, who was he sacrificed to? Did God sacrifice himself? The innovation, when you look at it, of divine sacrifice falls apart because Jesus never existed, is a non-existent divinity. Because then as a divine sacrifice, he becomes a mental trick that you have to use your own imagination to capture and to believe. Because if you do not believe that which the early Christian church teaches you about the idea that Jesus was a sacrificial lamb, and that his death was sacrificial, and that your atonement for sins is done through that, you are being trapped, and you will be condemned, and you self-condemn yourself, and you would want to fulfill, because you are told that Jesus is God. But did God sacrifice himself? No. Because the real creator is beyond physicality and spirituality. And we deal with the divinities. There is no divinity that died for our sins. Why would the divinity die for your sin? This theology of the crucifixion as a divine sacrifice with Jesus as the ultimate sacrificial lamb is a cornerstone of Christian theology. And through the doctrines of the Eucharist and the masses that consider this as truth and baptisms, the believers are engaged in a low vibrational level of spirituality where they deal with the pain, suffering, and all the negatives that you do not need to engage in. Eventually, it is solemnized by drinking and eating human flesh, so-called divine flesh, day side. And even though you use the symbols, it is very clear that you are engaging in some form of witchcraft. Because Jesus says, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. And Paul says, this is not imaginary, this is real. By faith, it transforms into reality. So, the innovation has taken you to act to fulfill it. The innovation of a non-existent divinity as a divine sacrifice is indeed a largely successful innovation in early Christianity. A purely Roman Catholic idea that Jesus' sacrificial death was an atonement for human sins, drawing on imagery from Jewish sacrificial practices, but reframing it in the new theological context, this became the Christian story that is hoodwinked billions and yet is not based even on Jewish Torah or practices as we have already identified. So when we look at the forgiveness of sins in our context as men and dominant human beings in our traditions, we know that our sins can be forgiven through a number of ways, purification, confession, reconciliation and reparation and honest and honest reparations and these all can be accompanied at certain times by a sacrifice an animal sacrifice this makes the sinner acceptable to the date to their neighbor to themselves and this parallel to the ancestors and this will give you your redemption and escape from the consequences of our sin this was well before the jewish and Christian innovation had, had been uh, crafted. Once you realize the spirit in this diabolical Christian innovation and know that they are there to deceive your soul and spirit and gain your spiritual energy, the force that is in you, that gives you the kingdom that is in you, they want that kingdom. You are challenged to work hard to be freed of this uh, Christian innovation. And you know definitely in your heart and in your spirit and in your own knowledge that you've got the power to save your own soul. Of course, you need the help through ancestral veneration to reclaim the power through your ancestors, of your ancestors, by studying their glorious culture, philosophy, architecture, art, science, literature, and spirituality. You also need to engage the divinities, the gods, within the context of redemption within your own culture. And when you do this, these practices, when you know this innovation and identify it and isolate it from your psyche, 
you are freed of its power. If you want to learn more, if you want to work with us, if you want to be a member of Marifado Family Network, you can continue to watch our YouTube channel and subscribe and like and share the videos with as many people as possible. You can also shoot us an email on join at marifado.com. Until we meet again, fight to be freed from this Christian innovation. I'm a need.